So here's the thing you should know about me. I'm not impressed by fancy cars or expensive watches. They don't do it for me. But what does is dry stone walls. Check this out. So right there was a relatively new dry stone wall built in the past couple of years and you can tell because it's not weathered much but still gorgeous, still really nice. Another one here as well. So yeah, they say with YouTube videos that people know within the first 30 seconds if they're going to watch the rest of it or not. So I'll be up front and tell you that this video is literally just going to be me wandering around looking at and admiring dry stone walls. So if that's your thing, you might enjoy, but if not, I'm being up front. So I'm in the West Yorkshire Hills at the moment, and I'm going for a little walk up a road, which about 100 years ago will have been a really popular road. So I know there's gonna be a lot of walls around it, and there's farmland up there as well. So I'm sure there's gonna be lots of walls that we can go and check out. And that one down there, the, the new one that we saw is really nice, but I'm looking forward to seeing some of the older ones, the ones that look like they were born with nature, just completely weathered by nature, and they're so part of the landscape. That's what I want to go see. So let's go. And already I've seen something that looks pretty interesting. So check this out. So this looks like a dry stone retaining wall, and I think the road will be just above it. So let's get close to it and see if we can follow it for a bit and see what it's like. So yeah, it's quite hard to date dry stone walls. And originally, they'll have been used with rocks like gathered from fields. Like you can see down here, there's so many rocks behind me. And then I've gathered all them up and built walls out of them. And then they started to quarry stone. And then when they did that, they were able to make it neater. Like the ones up here, you'll see. Great formula to the, to the blocks of stone. So look at this. Just look at these giant blocks of stone. And yeah, the road is just up there, so this is a dry stone retaining wall. And look how the nature's just completely taking it back over, all this moss and this stuff growing all over it. It just looks amazing. It looks like it's always been there. It doesn't look like it was built. No cement used either. Just great blocks of stone. Oi, let's keep walking. I think the wall stops here and then starts again, so let's go have a look. So I was originally just going to make one video about dry stone walls, but I've realised that there's so much to cover. I was up in the Lake District not a, not a while back, and that there are stones and the walls up there are so different from the ones here in Yorkshire. And then if you go down south, they're completely different as well. So I think there's too much to cover for one video, so I'm going to do a little series. So we're going to be covering Yorkshire today, and some of the walls in Yorkshire, and then we'll, we'll go do the Lake District and look up there where there's so much more slate was used and the walls are completely different. And then maybe we'll go further afield. I've been to Peru and I've been to Machu Picchu and I've seen the stones and the walls there that they built and they're just incredible. So big and they just have no idea how they cut them and got them so precise. So maybe, imagine if we could go to Peru and see the walls there. But today we're in Yorkshire and it's the old grit stone that they used to make them. That was predominantly what they used for the walls. It was easy to kind of shape into whatever they wanted to make these big blocks. And look at this, this is great. And look at this, when they built this wall, they just got to this tree and thought, fuck it, stop there, start again there. And then another one here, behind this massive tree. You can just see how these walls, they were just built in crazy places and it didn't phase them. They just thought, yep, let's keep going, let's keep going. Wow, what a great first wall to look at. Oh, I love this as well, how it just kind of just slants up and goes with the, the incline of the hill. So a good way to kind of tell how old the wall is. Originally they'll have just been used when they were clearing fields and grabbing rocks and boulders and building them like that. And then when they started to quarry stone, that's when it became easier because they could make the stones into certain shapes and sort of make it more formulaic. So dry stone walling became really popular in like the 1500s when farming changed from a, a communal thing, everyone was kind of doing it together. It's more privatised, so you'd want to block off your sections of land and separate fields. So dry stone walling was used for that, a really good way of doing that. So yeah, then it was in the 1600s when court orders started to come around 
and parliamentary law was introduced, which meant that people had to go and repair old walls or build new walls in certain areas. So it became really popular then, and it was a massive industry. So with separating land, dry stone walls were originally used to keep cows and horses in fields or on parts of land, which actually wasn't that hard to do. Then with sheep, it became a lot harder. Oh, there's loads of deer up there. Oh, let me see if I can get these deer. But then with sheep, it became a lot harder and the walls had to be higher and they really wanted to jump over them. So they had to build them higher, but they didn't want to build the walls too high because that would restrict the movement of deer who they wanted to roam freely across the land because obviously hunting deer was massive as well, a great source of food. I really like deer. I hope we see another one. So I love the walls that are just covered in moss and they look like they're part of the trees and the ground. And they just blend in so perfectly. Right, there's a really old wall here. You can barely even see it, just like I was saying. It's blended so well into the, the background. But it's there. And it goes up this really steep hill. So let's go and climb the steep hill. Let's go climb this steep hill and see if we can follow the wall for a bit. And it's probably fallen down at loads of places and needs repairing. Well, I don't think anyone's going to repair it out here in the sticks, but let's follow it anyway. Yeah, so this is like the remains of a wall. And look what we've got here. Metal fencing and barbed wire. What have we become? We used to build beautiful walls. Oh no, a dead bird. Oh, oh it's been absolutely maimed. Oh no. I'm not gonna show you that, that's awful. So there's such a skill to dry stone walling, there really is. My dad was a great dry stone waller, just as a hobby. But he built some beautiful dry stone walls. And I think that's probably what spurred my interest for them and passion for them and appreciation for them because my dad was so good at building them. I've tried it myself, actually. I went through a phase of trying to get a job as a dry stone waller, and it was really hard. There's not that much work for them anymore. There's other ways of separating land, but I'm stuck. But yeah, let's go this way. I have done a little bit, but such a skill to it, it really is. So yeah, dry stone walling was a winter to spring activity, occupying that dead time in the farming calendar. So you can imagine coming out into the hills and it was really cold in winter and having to build walls. Without the clothing, without the waterproofs we have today, it was a real tough, tough job. Real tough person's game, really was. And also, like as we saw before, these walls just cut up totally crazy paths into the landscape. Just straight up hills, straight through trees, anywhere. So this happened because often land boundaries were drawn by people who didn't know the land. So they drew a, a line going, this is where your land ends and your land starts. And then they went, go build a wall there. So they got to it and it was just straight up the hill. And they thought, well, we're gonna have to build it. And that's really good to see in the Lake District. When you get up to the lakes and you see some of the hills and the mountains and these dry stone walls that just cut straight up. Often like, I know one place where there's literally like a little cliff and they just go whoop and just build it straight over it. It's crazy. So we'll go see them. That's why I can't do everything in one video. So we'll do a series. Oh, exciting. And coming up now, we've got a, a gate, an old gate, and hopefully there'll be some holes in it. So there'll be holes in the gate posts where they'll have, they'll have used to put the, the wooden bars across. Yeah, so look, we've got two gate posts still standing. One there and one there, and the old wall. And this wall, just curves round and goes along there and then also just cuts straight down there down the hillside it's crazy and then on the other side the same up there and then just straight up there just straight up through the hills and it's amazing how they built it now these have got some little dents in them but i was hoping to be more holes what they used to do is they used to cut a big hole in here and on the other side and then they could put wooden barriers across to stop animals going through and then they could just take them out easily when they wanted to let the land be free against the animals. And that's the great thing about dry stone walls as well. Because there's no cement used or anything like that, they're so malleable, they could be built, and then when they needed to change it, they could be taken down and moved. Unlike all this cement we use for walls now, 
this was a this was well thought through so I bet if you live anywhere in the United Kingdom that's not a city you'll be closer to a dry stone wall than you think they're everywhere up north especially Scotland the north of England and then down south there are some but they used other field boundaries a lot more hedges were used down there but they're everywhere they were such an important part of how we built this country how we separated land and how we built roads and how to get to places so yeah next time you go for a walk trust me just follow some walls find a dry stone wall follow it see where it changes because they all intersect and go in all different ways go on a little journey with the dry stone walls right and across on the hillside now let me show you this oh that's great i'm not sure it'll be a great view but we'll try Yeah, so over there you can just see the dry stone walls cutting up the land into different portions, separating people's land. They look like the veins of the countryside. Right, we're at another gatepost now. Let's see what this one's like. Right, so I was looking at that big gatepost there and then I saw this little one here. Look at this. Can you see this one here? So this one here has a hole in it that goes all the way through to the other side. So you could put something through there which would block things passing which is really cool right let's go down this way and follow these walls and see where they take us oh maybe we should just go up there actually let's go this way they look like some nice walls this way If you ever come across a dry stone wall and carved into the rock is someone's initials that means that when they were building the wall that's where they got told to build up until and that meant that the next person's land who it was going onto, they had to take it over so if you ever come across that that's pretty cool it's where someone said I'm stopping it it's your job now you build the rest hopefully we'll get to a point as well where we can see a wall that's maybe collapsed a bit and we can look at how they're actually built because there's a certain way they're built which makes them so sturdy and keeps them standing for such a long time. And just as we spoke about that, I think there is one here that we can look at where the wall's collapsed. Yeah, nice. So yeah, dry stone walls are built. It's kind of like two walls with bigger rocks next to each other going up at the top. And then inside, they fill that with other rocks, rubble, smaller rocks to create a central point that's really sturdy. So I'll show you. You've got the wall on this side and then inside here, all little rocks, different rocks, smaller rocks, building it up. And then yeah, on top of the wall, they put a bigger rock to secure it all together, a coping stone. And they change all across the country on how they use. Some are slanted, in the Lake District you'll see them, and they slant and they go next to each other and it's stunning. Yeah, in Yorkshire you'll get the more rounded ones, because the stone here was more malleable. In the lakes the stone's a bit more brittle, so they couldn't work with it as much. Here we go, we've got some coping stones here. Just sat on top of the wall, just giving it that extra strength. I wonder when these were built. I wonder when it was. I'd love to know. Ooh, now that's a nice one. All right, we've got a great bit here. We've got two big gate, gate post stones. Look at this. And look at the amount of holes that have been put in it over time and where they'll have put wood across. And then on the other side as well. The great big holes cut into it. Three here, so you can imagine three big bits of wood going across here, creating a proper gate. And then on the other side, the wall goes where it goes that way, goes down there, and there's a junction here. And look at this, look where it goes up here. Just straight up into nature. So one good way of dating old walls is often uh, if a building nearby had fallen down and there were records of that building, often stones from that building would have been used to build walls. So sometimes they can go, oh, this stone was from this building. 
and they're able to figure out roughly when it was built. But it's really hard, it's really hard to date exactly when stone walls were built. And just look here. This fence here just doing a terrible job of keeping all that back. It's just growing through it. Wouldn't have happened with a wall. Another nice stone gate post just standing here. Check this out. Just still standing, not wanting to go anywhere. And then over here as well, ooh, nice. Really mossy dry stone wall. Behind the trees. Do you see that big stone there as well that looked out of place? I wonder if that was from when we did a bit of rebuilding on it, a bit of the wall collapsed and they thought, oh, I'll just put this big bit here. I'm not sure. It did look a bit out of place, but it's hard to tell. There's nothing wrong with a wooden fence. I'm not having a go at wooden fences. I'm just saying they're not as good as dry stone walls. Oh, that looks good. Look at this. And then you've got the other gate post just there and look at this big carving down this middle of it here so yeah they could just put whatever they were using in there slot it in slot it into that side nothing's getting through so back in the day there were three elements of pay to a dry stone wall so the landowner would pay someone to go quarry the stone and then pay them to transport it which obviously would be really hard transporting all that stone and then pay them to build it as well and I think that building the wall was actually the least paid out of the three. I think the hard part was transporting all the stone. So that's why each area has its own unique walls because no one wanted to transport all the stone really far. They just use stone that was nearby with a quarry nearby. And here is some really neat dry stone walling. Look at this. All these stones, uniform stones all cut pretty much the same size except for a few bits where you've got longer ones put in there but you can see these have always been quarried really well and built and look at the moss growing over it oh it's great and look here you can tell that this has had to be rebuilt here because the moss goes there then no moss new bit of wall new bit of wall new bit of wall and then back to moss here And these walls will have been built in the same method as the smaller walls up there on either side of the wall and then in the middle stuff and then on the top they've got coping stones except these these have been cemented down they've given it a daft haircut was it needed a lovely dry stone wall ruined with a bit of cement at the top but there we go and down here as well oh this is cool this is more of a field boundary, but you can see, look at this. These giant rocks, these boulders here, that have been cleared when they cleared all that land over there, because they've leveled all that land over there. It's got some parking on it and things like that. But you think when they were when they were getting rid of all that, when they were getting rid of all the earth, they'll come across these great boulders. And what they've done is they've, with a digger, no human can lift these, with a digger they'll have chucked them to the side and built what is essentially a wall separating that land from here, stopping nature growing from that side over here onto the path. Yeah, so a field boundary there with giant rocks, giant boulders, still by definition a wall. And again here, a crumbling wall going into the distance, up into the hills. And someone's left a poo bag. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in a bin. It's literally the only bit of rubbish that I've come across on this walk. The only bit. I'm pretty sure I'll find a bin soon. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed that today. This first episode, looking at some West Yorkshire dry stone walls and what remains of them and some new ones as well. So as I said, I was going to do one long video, but there's just far too much to see and explore. Hopefully next will be the Lake District. We'll be able to climb some mountains and see the great walls up there. And then who knows, maybe we'll go further afield. But yeah, if you like dry stone walls, subscribe because there's plenty more coming.